Are you struggling with emotional eating or are you wondering if you're struggling with emotional eating and you can't quite pinpoint if you are or aren't? Well, in today's video, I'm going to talk about what exactly emotional eating is, why we do it, what is at the roots of it, because it is a very common behavior. I struggle with it myself um, in the past and healed it and overcame binge eating food addiction and the binge purge cycle as well. And it's what birthed my business 11 years ago to help thousands of others gain food and body freedom and fully heal their relationship with food as well. So we're going to dive into all of that today and feel free to leave a comment below. If you are struggling, there's no shame in the game. I'm here to help you overcome this. So if you're struggling with emotional eating, sometimes that can also be a form of binge eating and other kinds of stress and emotional eating as well. So I'm going to break down in other videos, like the differences between emotional eating and binge eating, food addiction, binge purge cycle. But today specifically, I'm going to talk about emotional eating. And right before we do that, welcome. My name is Amber Romanik. I'm an emotional eating, digestive and hormone expert with 11 years experience helping men and women all over the world fully overcome their self-sabotage with food and gain food and body freedom. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss new videos dropping each week, as well as hit that like button if you like this kind of content, if this is helping you, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. This topic is so important to dive into. So many women and men are struggling with this and you don't have to keep doing so, so let's dive in. So what exactly is emotional eating? Well, to me, emotional eating is any reason for eating other than physical nourishment. So what we have to really decipher is first off, what is the difference between physical and emotional hunger? And then we have to understand that emotional eating has many emotional eating triggers, but there are physical symptoms and imbalances that can trigger emotional eating, which I'm totally going to dive into in depth in another episode. And there are energetic and even spiritual emotional eating triggers, um, which I'll share more about. But as an example, if you're a sensitive empath and you're sensitive to energy and uh, people dump all their stuff on you emotionally and then you go home and you're upset and you're carrying all of that with you, that can overwhelm you and that can trigger you to emotionally eat if you don't know how to manage your energy. So let's back up though first and go back to the difference between physical and emotional hunger. And I'm curious to hear from you. Do you know what physical and emotional hunger feel like for you? Do you know the difference if not, I'm going to break it down and this is going to help you out. So with physical hunger, we eat for physical nourishment, vitality to support our health and well-being. You get a hunger signal, a stomach growl, your blood sugar drops and you get dizzy, lightheaded, faint, right? Your appetite level increases. You feel irritable. You know, this is kind of like that hangry kind of dynamic. Maybe you look at the clock and you see you haven't eaten in a few hours and it's time to eat. You're going to get physical symptoms and sensations. And if you are going, I never feel hungry. Well, there could be something going on hormonally with your cortisol or your thyroid or both that are shutting off your hunger signal and slowing your metabolism down. It's not normal to not have a hunger signal. And if you're not having one, you'll want to go and watch my adrenal fatigue series and my thyroid series, which, which I will link below. Um, but that's where I'm talking more about those things. But physical hunger, those are the symptoms. So now what is emotional hunger? Well, it's everything else. Emotional hunger is any reason for eating other than physical nourishment. So you're eating because you're bored, you're sad, you're lonely, you just finished dinner, but because you weren't mindful or present, maybe you're watching TV or working, you weren't emotionally and physically satiated. So now you're like, oh my gosh, I'm finished that, but I want more. So you go dig through the cupboard and you eat more. You associate eating and watching TV, eating and working. You feel guilty pausing to take your lunch break and because you feel guilty because you need to people please and you know make sure everyone else is happy with your work, you're eating and working rather than pausing and just taking that time for yourself to nourish your body. Guilt, what's below the guilt, not feeling good enough and feeling the need to appease others. That is emotional eating. You could be emotionally eating because you get on the scale and you don't like the number that you see. It could be because you just ate a lot of processed food like fast food, processed salts, processed sugars, and now your cravings are increased and you want more. A big emotional eating trigger is overwhelm, your stress levels. You're feeling a lot of fear, worry, anxiety, anger, frustration, sadness. Some people also want to emotionally eat when they're really happy. Um, a big one that I see for a lot of my clients and that I went through as well was the all or nothing mentality triggering emotional eating. So essentially you're like, I've got to eat clean. I've got to follow my diet or my eating plan. And then you have one thing off the beaten track that's a bit different. And it just triggers you into this, I messed up. 
I can't believe I did that. And then it triggers you to go into screw it. I'm going to eat whatever I want for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. And I'll try again next week. That is a huge emotional eating trigger. Body image. Maybe you're trying on clothes and they don't fit properly. And that upsets you and you throw the talent and go back to self-sabotage with food. Diets because they're very restrictive and they feel the perfection. I have to eat perfectly mentality. And then once you fail, you rebel and you go and eat everything you weren't allowing yourself to have. So as you're hearing, those are just a few of the potential dozens and dozens and dozens of triggers that you may have. I'm curious as you're listening to this, what's coming up for you? Share below in the comments. Let's get a conversation around this going. This isn't talked about enough and we need to talk about it. And there's no shame in the game of talking about it. Try not to feel embarrassed if you're struggling with this. I was essentially to the point where I was eating out of my garbage can, you know, binge eating and food addiction and and losing control most nights of the week. Um, and for me, I spent over $50,000 on binge eating, you know, in about five years because I was binge eating most nights of the week and spending 70, 80, $90, um, that I really didn't have. And it really did a number on my hormone health, my gut health. But, you know, I think there's so many potential triggers, but each person has a unique set of triggers. And that's why it's so important for us to connect and explore your unique set of triggers. So if you want to connect to explore support with emotional eating, binge eating, or food addiction, or anything that I'm talking about here, click the link in my description to book a 30 minute complimentary body freedom consultation, where we can connect on zoom, talk more about your relationship with food, weight, hormone health, gut health, mindset, and so much more. And then we can also explore the potential of going on a journey together and doing some coaching together and talking through the programs that can really benefit you to fully gain freedom from these behaviors. So like I mentioned earlier, there's not just emotional, emotional eating triggers. There are physical, emotional eating triggers. And I'm going to give you a few examples right now. So some of the most common things that I see that are physical symptoms that we have that trigger emotional eating are things like you have really intense sugar, salt, or processed food cravings. And these cravings just really influence you to overeat. The next one is different hormone imbalances. So things like high cortisol, fuel more irregular blood sugar, more increased appetite levels, you don't feel as satiated, you're more moody and irritable. So that can trigger emotional eating as well when you don't sleep well, because when you're fatigued, your appetite levels tend to increase and that makes it easier to overeat. So that lack of sleep becomes a trigger. The I don't care mentality that I talked about earlier can also happen when you're fatigued and those together can brew the perfect storm of an emotional eating episode. Another example is you have poor gut health and especially poor gut flora. And that means that there's a lot of unhealthy candida, yeast, fungus, bacteria, especially in the large intestine from all kinds of different reasons, lots of sugar, stress, antibiotic use. And that can make you crave sugar like crazy and become an emotional eating trigger. If you have low dopamine and serotonin, the mood boosting neurotransmitters that make you feel good, that can trigger you to want to binge and emotionally eat. Because when your your mood boosting neurotransmitters are low, we want to reach for a quick dopamine high to feel good for just even a few moments. So there's many more, but this just opens you up to the fact that it's not just emotional, there's physical symptoms that are fueling this behavior as well. And then there's also the energetic. So how many of you are like me and you're a sensitive empath and you feel other people's emotion and energy and they don't even have to be in the same room as you. You feel the collective. There's a lot of energy going on in the collective right now, as a lot of you know. And maybe you feel it and some days you wake up and you just feel fear or lack or worry and you're like, this isn't even mine, but maybe you don't know it's not yours. And so you go and you emotionally eat to numb, suppress, shove down or distract yourself from feeling. And that's often a huge reason why we emotionally eat. We're afraid to feel our emotions. We don't know how to feel and process through our emotions. We don't have healthy ways to cope with our stressors. And we want to distract, numb, avoid, or shove those emotions down. Now, a huge reason why we emotionally eat is actually because we have a void, a lack of self-love, a lack of worthiness that we're trying to fill with food and or other vices that we will never fill with those things. And so I often find that there is a level of unworthiness that we have not dealt with or fulfilled to step fully into our power and into our self-worth that is fueling this behavior. Because after all, even though you might not like me saying this, Any kind of emotional eating, binge eating, or self-sabotage with food is an act of self-sabotage and it's an act of self-loathing and self-hate. You're hurting your body with food. You are not honoring and respecting your body if you are hurting your body with food. Now, it's not to shame you because I went through this as well. And it's like you get to the point where you don't care about any of that. And you're like, I just want my quick fix. I want to numb. I want to feel like I have control with food. 
A big reason we emotionally eat is because we feel like we don't have other control in other areas of our lives. And we think, oh, if I can control the food, though. I can pick what I want to eat. I can control the diet. I can control the binge when in, in reality, we're usually out of control. But there's a huge unworthiness component to this that fuels this behavior. So just to recap, emotional eating is any reason for eating other than physical nourishment. We talked about the differences between physical and emotional hunger and explored some of the many potential emotional eating triggers that could be coming up. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave you with here is that one of the reasons I see so many continue to struggle with this behavior is because we continue to be convinced by the diet and weight loss industry that, oh, you just need to find the right diet. You just need more willpower. You just have to try harder with food and exercise, and then you'll gain control with food. And let me tell you, it's got nothing to do with any of that. No diet or quick fix is going to help you heal your relationship with food because it's not going to go within and help you recognize the differences between physical and emotional hunger, help you identify what's triggering you to self-sabotage with food, help you learn to cope with stress in healthy ways and process through these emotions and help you regulate, you know, these old patterns that we wire in the brain. Every time you repeat this habit of emotionally eating, you're wiring this pattern in your brain and then it, it's lighting up telling you, oh, you should go and eat. Oh, you should go and eat. As example, I used to binge in the evenings and even if I didn't want to, because I had done it so much and created this strong pattern in my brain, I would be sitting and this pathway would light up and it's like, it's time for you to binge. It's time for you to binge. And so what we don't realize is how multifaceted and complex emotional eating behaviors are. And it can feel really hard in the beginning to figure out what to do or where to go or how to get out of it. And that's why I'm here to create these videos and to educate you. So I'm curious what you're learning from this. Again, no shame in the game if you're struggling, but I want to advocate for you until you don't have to keep struggling and you can fully overcome it. And are you ready to explore taking a different path and ending the quick fix approaches that are just keeping you stuck? Because here's the question I'll ask you. Have you ever tried doing the deeper emotional work to overcome this behavior? If you're answering no, then I can tell you that if you haven't tried anything, how do you know, you know, if, if you don't try, essentially. Um, most of the people that I work with and do a consultation with, I'll ask the question and 100% of them say no. They haven't tried their deeper work and there's a few that have but maybe you haven't found the right person yet who really gets what you're going through. I get it, I personally went through it and healed it and I've helped thousands since in the last 11 years. So I'm happy to connect with you. Like I said, you can click the link in the description to book a 30 minute complimentary body freedom consultation. There's also links below to um, listen to the podcast, which is almost 500 episodes and I dive deep into all of these subjects, as well as the free emotional eating masterclass. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, give this a like, leave a comment. You're not alone. Let's get this narrative going. This is a safe space for you to share what's going on for you. And I look forward to connecting with those of you that want to book a consultation and explore going on the journey. Stay tuned. There's going to be a whole emotional eating series coming over the coming weeks. So you won't want to miss it. See you next time.